Hey guys, it's Melanie, and today, in replacement of the Squid Day section that we originally had planned, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about a really cool invert in this week's lab called the Vampire Squid. So the Vampire Squid, or Vampirotuthus infernalis, is a small cephalopod in the order Vampiromorphia in family Vampirotuthidae. It was first described in 1903 by teuthologist Carl Chung as a type of octopus, teuthology being the study of cephalopods, by the way. So despite its common name, it's not actually a true squid, nor is it an octopus like Chung previously described, but it is similar anatomically to both. It is the only known living member in its order. It resides usually in deep water between 600 to 1,000 meters down, where there's very little oxygen saturation, less than about 5%, and no visible light penetrates the water whatsoever. It is a relatively small cephalopod, only about 15 centimeters long, but some females are known to grow as long as 40 centimeters. And it lives longer than most squids. Scientists think the adult stage is only around eight years, so its entire life stage would be more than eight years, compared to some smaller uh, cephalopods in the range between maybe only one to two years. So the three parts of the squid's body form, mantle, head, and arms, are popping up here right here. These are other aspects of the squid's body plan, so photophores, fins, web, photoreceptors, eye, and olfactory organ. Some of these we're going to discuss a little bit more in depth in the next two slides, where we will be comparing this organism to other cephalopods that it is or was mistook for. So like true squids, the vampire squid uses jet propulsion in order to move swiftly and flaps its fins for stability and steering. It also has eight arms per organism with two longer, albeit retractable, filaments that are used to capture food, much like the tentacles of a squid. It also has an internal gladius in the mantle, which in true squid is known as the pen, to support muscular tissues and organs. The pen, or gladius, is what allows for the jet propulsion to happen. Alike to some species of octopus, the vampire squid's arms are connected by a thin membrane webbing. Some differences that separate the vampire squid into their own order include the following. So their eight limbs are lined with cirri, or cirri, however you pronounce it, unlike the suction cups of, say, an octopus. Of all the deep sea cephalopods, their metabolic rate is the lowest, but their hemocyanin, or their blue blood, is able to transport oxygen way more efficiently than in other cephalopods. This is aided by the gills that they have. They just take up a larger surface area of the organism. They also possess photophores, which are organs that look like small white discs all over the squid's body that are capable of generating light intensity. This can create an effect of bioluminescence that is mainly used to confuse predators. The photophores are larger and more complex at the tips of the arms and the base of the two fins. As you can see in the bottom right picture, you can see them on the tips of the arms. There are two white areas on top of the head, which initially were believed to be photophores, but are now identified as photoreceptors. Their chromatophores, which are used for color production, also differ from other cephalopods, as they are not entirely developed like the others. So vampire squids cannot easily change color for camouflage or courtship purposes. Although it's not too big of a problem, since at the depths that they're at, color recognition for visible light is not very necessary. So yeah, that's basically the gist of my presentation. Thanks for tuning in.